to drop frames this is episode 295 here on the 1st of December. That's on you. Well, I mean, I could fix that unless you want to just, yeah, that works. Too. Oh God, our shoulders are touching. <laughs> oh, oh, stop it. Uh, this is all my doing. This is my fault. I'm taking my shoulder. Stop. Oh my God, that mug is the most fucking precious thing I've ever seen in my entire existence. Oh, oh my, my God. God. Oh, oh. Uh, that, uh, that drink must be way too sweet. That's too. Uh oh. Well, he he's going to vomit. He'll yeah, what is he? Is he going to vomit, or is he going to get like his goatsy cup to balance this out? Like, what's happening, right? Oh now? God. I don't know. By the way, funny funny story about Goatsy. Yes, I have one. Uh, Rami messaged me this morning and asked if we were into NFTs because viewers from Drop Frames keep asking him <laughs> what's wrong with NFTs. And so he thought that we were sponsored. And uh, I told him, we are. Uh, we have an NFT of Zeke Goatsying the stream. But uh, yeah. yeah. yeah, It's one. It's we have no. We have, it's it's the only NFTs. one. It's it. We're, we're into NFTs. Yes. And that one NFT will be going up for auction at the end of the year. Yes. And um, I'm thinking once it sells, we could probably all three buy palatial estates. I think maybe, so. Maybe small countries, islands. Yeah. Something like that. Something like that. I think so. Yeah. Yes. Uh, we are no, I went to my, I went to the, uh, my closet to get, because I wanted to compete with the grossness of that cup. Okay. That wholesome, wholesome grossness. And because I got this made. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, yeah. Someone made that for me. Beautiful. It's my my poodle dad shirt. It's it pretty good. <laughs> was that taken on stream or where is that photo even from? It's, it's outside. It's from outside. Oh. It's from our backyard. It's pretty good. It's that great. It's fantastic. It's a good shirt. It's a yeah. good shirt. I don't know if I we have like a family photo hung in the I'm not gonna go get that down from like the fireplace though. That's probably the cheesiest thing we have. I don't have a coffee cup, unfortunately. I drink out of a girl boss coffee cup. Okay, I've got my priority straight. Yeah, yeah, that's what I've got. Uh, anyways, we should probably talk about video games. Before we do, though, we do have a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, I think I've mentioned this a couple times on my stream. I don't know. Uh, Co might have. I'm not sure. And Zeke, you might have as well. Uh, but we're coming up on 2022. Uh, and we started kicking around the idea of just things that we want to do with the show, changes that we want to do with the show. Uh, we have a bunch of things that uh, we're, I don't think we're ready to talk about just yet in terms of uh, structure and stuff like that um, and some small changes. Nothing's really going to change too much, but we are going to change the date that this show happens uh, or the day, I should say, not the date uh, that this show happens every week. And that is going to be on Sundays. Sunday, Sunday. We're going to move the show to Sundays. I think at the same time. Wait, what? Why didn't you tell me this before the show, JP? I can't believe you would do that. Frankly, Here, here's the thing. You already have your stand in it if you say no. So it's really not a it's, it's fine either way. Come on to Sunday or we'll print on the other guy. Jesus. <laughs> That's not true. Also, Zeke, no. to show you actually a little bit of love for that uh, savage true. burn from Co. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> anytime I would mention that on the stream, everyone in chat would be like, well, what about Zeke? What about Indy Sunday? So right. they know, right? You got, you got, uh, they know it's going to be a different day. I think is what you planned. Yeah. I mean, yeah. this, uh, th the reason why I, I, I wasn't like, I was, I, I was actually encouraging about moving the day to Sunday is because, uh, that it makes my week line up very nicely now. Same. Uh, I, I can have, I can keep, keep my Mondays off. Um, cause I like having a weekday off because I need to go out into the world and do things, you know, like <laughs> with businesses open. Yeah. Um, so having Mondays off is great. Uh, it's usually a slow stream day anyway. Um, when I have broadcasted on Mondays, but also, uh, it, I can, I, I'm just going to move Indy Sunday to Saturday. There you go. It's going to be Indy Saturday. Indy Saturday. Just cool. Totally fine. And so it'll be having Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Monday. Friday. Uh, all all in a row of just mainstream days. Indie Saturday drop frames lines up perfectly for me. Yeah, Co. Yeah, for me, um, I you know as as my audience knows, I tend to do like uh, the bulk of my kind of big release streaming and stuff during the week, and also like a lot of big releases are on Tuesday, yep. which I frequently will do like big big you know streams on Tuesdays. 
And then I go into Wednesdays and now I have a full day to continue that kind of stuff. Also, frankly, having more weekday afternoons for me is much better uh, as the dad thing. Since more more stuff that may need my attention with the kids happens during the week. Yeah. yeah we, we appreciate y'all's understanding. It's going to be weird. There's going to be growing pains, but it's always recorded. So, you know, you can always watch it whenever you want to. You can you can still watch your show on Wednesdays. It's fine. We don't listen to chat anyway. So it's, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's you can have your own little drop frames Wednesdays. That's true. That's true. Also, I, I, I didn't even really. Are your kids in school yet? How old are your kids? What What's going yeah. on over there? Well, okay, how, what, so, so are, they, are you taking them to school or picking them up yet? Uh, mostly my wife is. Okay. Um, I, I have not started that, but I'm going to be, especially if we ever get to a point where they're going to different schools. So um, right now, my son Rowan, who is four, is in preschool. It's fucking weird. And uh, yeah, Kai is two. He's not yet going there. And then Asher is coming up on three months, two and a half months now, almost three. Wild, wild, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's crazy. Yeah, what? Oh, did we? That's, that's I remember when you had zero. Yeah, I think right. we are going to do same time. Yeah. We could we'll push up to my four. normal start time, but that's nine a.m. for Zeke, and I already do that to Jesse and Bronze, and they fucking hate me. So I don't want Zeke to show up <laughs> at nine a.m. I've been doing this show longer. I'm more important than those two assholes. You should... We don't look time. to be honest. That show rarely starts on time, anyways, because they're so fucking tired. So yeah, <laughs> we'll keep it. At, we'll keep it at one p.m. Eastern. Yeah, yeah. Uh, cool. Even though I think That's Zeke's great. in Mountain Time now, so it's not that early for him. It would be one no, hour. No, no. This is I this is this is my normal start time. The, the, it oh, lines okay. up perfectly. Well, there you go. This Perfect. I, Let's do that. I start my go. streams at ten a.m. Pacific every day. Yeah, so. yeah. And then uh, right across the board for me, it makes sense because now I can do JPNN and Trailer Time Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And not like rehash a lot of the news that we do on drop frames on Wednesdays anyways. So it kind of worked for all of our schedules, uh, ultimately. Mm -hmm. Um, and so we'll, we'll see how that works. And if, if it doesn't work, Hey, we can always just change things. There's nothing set in stone. That's, that's, uh, we're all very flexible, which is good, but that will not happen until, uh, our first show in 2022, which will be the game of the year show on January 2nd, which will be, uh, this first Sunday of, uh, the new year. So. Game, games, of games of the year. Games of the year. Yeah, yeah. Oh, are you going to do one of those things where you try to put... Are you going to build a studio in two days? Or, like, move your studio in two days? Or is it going to be ready to move into? So, right now, we we have basically done, like, the framing's up. The rough-in is done. The insulation's up. The drywall's up. The drywall's been sanded. The, the roof is in. They're having to, having to add electrical to the roof. And then over the next two weeks is painting framing and they're going to build all the stuff inside so okay. i I'm, I'm hoping yeah i'm hoping to be in the new studio by january 1st that's what we're <laughs> shooting for as well um well you know we'll see yeah and i've, I've already been seeing people ask about it. the reason my mic sounds so weird is i'm basically in a giant hollow room <laughs> like there's there's nothing going on in here i mean y'all should see this ghetto see my soundproofing in here like this this it's just literally like just like painted it's terrible it's absolutely terrible it's just a giant empty Wait, room. Do you have soundproofing in front of you? No, none. Well, no, behind I do a few, but not oh, much. Okay. So, yeah, but the, the room is also weird because it's like got straight walls into a top into like a curve. And so it's like, it's just, it's weird. The whole thing's weird. It's all weird. Angles, man. So anyway, yeah, it's, it's yeah. terrible. But anyway, um, and all this should be changed in the new um, office. I'm very excited to move in. It's, it's hopefully going to be a lot better. Yeah. Well, then we'll also have that. Uh, for the, whatever that is. And I think a uh, community vote <clears throat> will be happening again. Um, looks like, I think we're testing that this week and we should be good, good to go and uh, start promoting that next week, uh, for the community vote. So, uh, that's whenever we kind of get that stuff ironed out hundred percent. So should be sometime next week. <clears throat> Zeke. I saw, I saw well, the mouth thinking I saw that I... It was, was your, was your brain. Was your mouth moving no, faster than your brain? Sure, I wasn't <laughs> sure how far you were going to move away from Co changing his office because I had an office oh. like thing that I want to do. Yeah, uh, are I, you going to get a desk that has a, a I'm, tripod at the back? <laughs> I'm going to go couch. I think I'm going to go back to the couch. Oh, nice. okay. I gotta say, man, I miss that couch, dude. I had I had guests over and stuff, and uh, it was really crowded trying to put like three office chairs and like in front of a thing that's set up for you know. For one, like, and with the arms and stuff, it's like, it's so hard to, to finagle. Yeah. But I also remember, like, how much, how comfortable it was to stream from a couch. Um, But also, I have dogs now. They and can I get up the on the couch. Open, 
and they and it feels like they come in they're like oh your back's to us and you have this like you have these arms that are like these high walls like they, i can't get to your you know your flesh or whatever i can't put my head on you and i'm like i want my dogs to put my head on uh, their head on me while i'm streaming that's fine so getting a couch i think is I, I'm, I'm i'm trying to figure it out it's still pretty small in here yeah and i'm still figuring out but thankfully this the the de- the table i got to put all my shit on is a adjustable one so mm. i can move it down to, to uh table height or to couch height so now Zeke, want to. what if you had two stream rooms and you had a couch room and a game room or just put them both in one room true also well, that, yeah that would that would that would make yeah okay that would make three streaming rooms Yep. Oh, right. Because Katie has one. Because Katie has taken over the entire living room. That's that is her streaming room. Um, How'd you lose that have, bit? What? What? Why you got the smaller room? The funny thing is, I put myself in here before she even moved in. Before I, you know, did you know the living like, room was an option? <laughs> yeah, hey, Pete. And you know why? I'm I didn't pretty take sure. It? I'm pretty sure they sat down and they said, and, and Katie was like, "Okay, so I'm clearly the more successful one. So I need more room to grow. Um, I need the larger area." Okay. And Zeke, knowing his position, said, "Absolutely right, dear." Well, <laughs> could be. That's totally correct. Uh, <laughs> well, no, the thing is, like, she doesn't stream with a green screen, mm. so uh, she decorates and she has like all kinds of you know different uh, animal enclosures and lights and and decorations and all that shit. And I don't hadn't need any of that. I just got a green screen. So this room, I picked this room when I moved here because it was the easiest to to screen off. Sure. You know, I didn't expect to be living with, you know, a wife and dogs. But life happens sometimes. Yeah. I like having this room as my office work. And then when I leave this, I leave this is where work happens out there. Is not, and I just had a living room that wasn't doing, I wasn't doing anything in. Yeah. I had a couch and a coffee table that I never used. It just sat there. I was like, <laughs> I, I got a couch and a coffee table out in the living room because I thought I should. Like I could have left it bare <laughs> until yeah. she moved here. Yeah, like no one used it. <laughs> but yeah, I want to go back to couch. I want to go back to couch. Gotta get a couch. I think that I think that'll be fun. Yeah. Uh, for I hope I hope for a while. I hope the dogs uh feel like they can come in and hang out with me. But man, after getting a dog and not owning one for a long time, dogs they are pretty good. Just become your life, dude. Don't they? It's true. It's true. Yeah. Yep. Speaking of someone who has kids, of course, it's a good call. I mean, they're probably not. <laughs> you know as comparable you know like but there are a lot I less think about my dogs a lot <laughs> yeah wait kids are a lot less oh no dogs are a lot less expensive yeah. i had to think about that first <laughs> yes yeah yeah no like my life is so much more fulfilled that i have these two puppies in my life not that katie doesn't do a great job she does trust me but <laughs> i'm just saying like to have someone to be like oh dude, every time i speak to them they're like I'm fucking happy to see you. And I'm like, wow, every day, every day you're that happy to see me. And I, I don't, I like, I, I had to have that existed. since I was a kid. It's yeah, great. Crazy. Anyway, one sorry. thing that I've definitely learned to appreciate more than anything is the fact that with animals, <clears throat> you can set boundaries. So you, you put up a dog gate in a door, you know that that's it. That's, mm. that's just become that dog's world. You close the door for a cat. And it's like, cool, the cat's not going in that room. But watching Rowan, every time we get a new way to keep him out of a drawer or out of a house or something, watch him just reason through it every time. He Every single time the kid levels up his lockpicking in some new form that you never expect. Yeah. And the <laughs> best part is the, the last couple times he's done it, he has actively hidden the fact that he can do it. Oof. So like at one point, like, like we, I have a kid's gate to get into my office here. Because I got a bunch of computers and stuff. And um, he literally, like, I caught him going in. So he he opened it himself. It requires him pulling up, pulling something back, pushing it down, and then pushing it forward. Yeah. It's a four-year-old. And, and I'm like, you're not supposed to be able to. So he does this. He goes inside, and he's picking something up. And then I walk up behind him, and I'm like, Rowan, you know you're not supposed to be in there. And he turns around and looks at the door, and he goes, how did that happen? He's picked up on your your sarcastic wit there. That's your doing. <laughs> I mean, I I watched from around the corner as he opened it. How did how did the what 
What happened? That's a co-son oh. right there. That's a co-son. Oh, my God, dude. <laughs> I'm yeah. seriously like you're four years old. This is not okay. Yeah. Where did you learn this? See, that's that. You don't even watch television. Like that, that doesn't seem that bad because right now, as the stepdad of a teenager, we slam doors uh, around here so much so yeah, that one of the doors, that, right? uh, you know, is is coming off of its hinges uh, if they do it a couple more times. So, yeah, yeah, I would take uh, the lock picking uh, <laughs> any day over replacing a fucking door, but yeah. <laughs> You know, we didn't we didn't know he knew how to get into the lock on the pantry until we found his stash of food in his room that he had been sneaking out of the pantry. He had even told us, Whoa. like, no, I don't know how to get in there. Pull on doorknob. No, I don't know how to get in there. No, no, not wow. at all. Yeah. Yeah. My Lord, dude. It's Jeez. the kid is way, way too. I, I think he's smarter than me. Kid. I know. Part of me no. I was a kid old. once, and I, dude, I remember being a kid, and my brother would lock the door, and I would get a penny, and just put it in the little like uh, depression on the door, and spin it open, and just fling the door open, and run the fuck away, because I knew I was gonna get my ass beat if he got <laughs> <me>. <laughs> And so that was always fun. That was always That's fun. That's kind of great. Yeah, yeah. Um, there was uh, I was playing, been playing a. Uh, well, I, I, I don't know if it's going to be a spoiler or not, but I'm just going to say, okay. someone in my chat said, well, a dog or a pet, you can drop them off at the pound, right? Like, you can't do that with a kid. I'm like, you know, recently I was playing a video game where someone did just that thing. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> You're not, I mean. Like a grown child just, boop. Yeah. Can you do that? <laughs> Didn't people used to do that at a uh, like a fire uh, firehouse fire station? Isn't that a thing still, where you can drop a kid off? The, there was like a baby basket, like yeah. alert, like you can yeah. leave a, the baby a in the basket at the a fire no station. questions yeah. asked. Yeah, it was a safety yeah. thing. Like instead of injuring the kid, we will not ask any questions. Just drop them off here, and then they will take them to like a child services thing. Yeah, yeah. Chad yeah. Stanley's still. I've never playing. seen it, but like I've I heard, I've heard it. Yeah, yeah. Crazy stuff. All right, let's talk. Uh, let's talk video games. Talk, talk Twitch for a little while. Uh, okay. Biggest news of the week. I don't think it's necessarily the biggest news, but it became the biggest news. Uh, Ludwig left for the old YouTube's. Uh, I'd say it is. Yeah, funniest part of this PC gamer story is the sub headline makes it sounds like he died because he says uh, <laughs> they said he leaves behind three point one million followers. And a record for most subscribers on Twitch. So, yeah. Really? Wow. Uh, yeah. He, uh, what, what did he hit? Like 240, 247,000 or something like that on, that wow. On a sub, uh, yeah, something like that. It was a lot wow. on a subathon. It was the most of all time. I don't know what the actual number was. Oh, it was, uh, 200, 269,154 subs is what he hit on a subathon. Nice. Yeah. Uh, how did he do that? Also, what, I think, what was the setup for this? Like, I'm, I'm curious. It was a subathon. He just, he did one of the. He did, he was the one that did the 30 day subathon. He was the one so that did was, it first. His, yeah. Yeah. His, his, he was like the first person to do that. So it was a really big deal. Which, also, uh, shout out. He took the money from that and like, Donated a bunch of charity, paid his mods a bunch. Like, yeah, it's not like he just, you know, did all that and, and go. Anyway, here, here's the thing. This is really, really big news. Um, it's actually, it's huge news. And it's huge news because this is when we start seeing a one-off become a trend. So first we saw Tim the Tatman and Dr. Lupo, two huge streamers that were wooed away by YouTube. Then here we are later and we see the top, the, uh, uh, the sixth, top creator on Twitch has now also left. And everyone at YouTube is being very clear about the fact that there are more leaving soon. Yeah, They've all teased that. So what we're seeing for the first time is, is like with Mixer, Mixer was not ready when they did their big drop. When they got Shroud, when they got King of Thalion, when they got Ninja, Mixer was not ready for that. They invited people into a house that wasn't done being built. Um, this is different with YouTube. Now, granted, the YouTube experience is significantly behind Twitch, especially, especially their web-based. Their, their mobile is a little bit more arguable, but their web-based chat and everything is missing a lot of features that, that Twitch people have come to really appreciate. 
which is one of the reasons that even now you still have people go, cool, I guess you're going to YouTube. I'm not going to watch anything. But <clears throat> what we're seeing is we're seeing YouTube start to move over people that already have YouTube presence, like Tim the Tatman, Dr. Lupo, now Ludwig. So not only are they going here and being very clear about the fact that they're there to help develop the platform, turn it into what people want from a live streaming platform, that kind of thing, but they're also not, they're going into a home that's already constructed and they're already successful in, in most cases. So it, it's, it's a much more, it's much more throwing the gauntlet between large platforms than we saw with Mixer. Um, and, and this is kind of like, this could, this could herald the first true schism that we've seen. Is Twitch going anywhere? No. No. Yeah. Is Twitch going anywhere in its, in its previous, we're obviously the top streaming platform. This is what may be the start of it. Potentially. The other thing that I will say is while I think it's, it's hard to say this without like people think I'm choosing a side, which is I what I don't want to do, but I guess I'll just say it and whatever happens. YouTube essentially is trying to buy a live streaming service by bringing over these creators, which is completely fine. I mean, we've seen it before. And and like you said, YouTube doesn't necessarily, do. uh, you know, they, they have the base because it's YouTube, but what they don't mm -hmm. have and what they really can't have because their platform is not built for it yet. It might be in the future is you can have the, you know, the 10, the 20, the 30,000 viewer streams, but they don't have the 10 person streams. And if they do, you can't fucking find them on that platform. Uh, it's impossible to, they don't, they just, they're not built for it at the moment. And so if they could start to facilitate that, like everyone's is, is shouting from the rooftops, like, oh my God, they've got Tim, they've got, you know, Ludwig and all these uh, courage and Valkyrie. Great. They've got 10 streamers. You, uh, Twitch has like how many active partners, uh, like how many active streams that could just be replaced. Any of the top people leave, there will always be people to replace them on Twitch. I don't necessarily know if that's true on YouTube. Uh, and, and so that's where it starts to get a little bit like YouTube is eventually going to take over Twitch. Like they have so much more work to do where if Twitch just continues, maybe these contracts run out on YouTube. Maybe these creators come back. We just saw this guy's toast do it last week after he came, uh, came back from Facebook. Um, there's a we reason know he got an offer from YouTube as well. And sure. Yeah. To take yeah. Twitch. Nick Merckx, or I, I'm sure just like in the Tatman, Nick Merckx was talked to by YouTube and he stuck to Twitch as well. Absolutely. It's one of the reasons that, I, yeah, I, clear, I I said earlier, like as well, like Twitch isn't going anywhere. It's, yeah. Like it's going, like, especially it's, it's still very successful. It's still the biggest. Um, Where's Ninja? You're yeah, absolutely right. Is you're he on Twitch? Right with that. Yeah, Ninja's still on Twitch. Yeah. Okay. okay. I'm just still on Twitch. Yeah. But uh, you're, you're absolutely right. Like it, in they, they, they're trying to buy the, not only the streamers, but more importantly, their community. They're right. trying to bring over all of those people to normalize YouTube as a competitor. Um, you know, it'll be interesting to see if it works. Yeah. It didn't work for yeah. Mixer. So we'll see if it works for YouTube. It did not. Um, and well, I, 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 I liken it to, uh, it sounds like the way television first started. It was like, you had the networks, ABC, CBS, NBC, right? And then you started getting, peppering in more like cable channels here and there. And uh, <clears throat> that's kind of like, I started watching, you know, grew up watching all the networks, but then when cable started coming around, because I'm old, old as fuck, by the way, um, <laughs> I didn't watch any of the network television shows after that. Like, I watched all cable shows, which are drastically lower viewership, but more to my more to my taste. And yeah, if YouTube can figure out that fucking formula, then I think they got something. But right yeah. now, they just have ABC, CBS, and NBC. <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. Um, I think the other thing, <clears throat> too that this signifies is that Twitch is done signing giant contracts. If YouTube has outbid them this many times on streamers, then to me, after signing a contract and seeing a ton of my friends sign contracts over the past, I don't know, two or three years on the platform, some of these contracts running out now from the creators that have left over to YouTube. I think they're done making these giant grandiose gestures to keep creators on the platform. Um, and a lot of people make this weird thing that like, Oh, Twitch hates its creators. It's like, no, you dummies. Twitch is a business, <laughs> right? Like YouTube is a business. None of feelings aren't factored into any of this. And if it is, then you're not, you're playing the game wrong in my mind. Uh, for people saying like, Oh, you know, Twitch really should care about its creators more. And 
they should send them gifts and really make them feel welcome on the platform. It's like, no. If they don't want to stream on the platform, like, they can leave, right? <laughs> like, you're, I, Here's the thing. Here's the thing. You, you're not wrong, but the point you're talking about right now is one it evolved into. The older you've been on Twitch, yes. the more that change is apparent. People who are just coming up to Twitch now, Twitch is just a streaming platform, especially ever since Amazon bought them. They have been slowly but continually moving towards the, we are just a company, we are here to make money. Like, And, and these days, that's exactly where they are. They are just a big company, they're here to make money, uh, and these recent deals speak exactly what you're saying. But Twitch didn't start that way. And, and especially, like, Twitch very much used to be very passionate and tried to make it clear how passionate they were about what they were doing and what they were and how it was working. But as a victim of their own success, they then got bought by people that don't care about that at all and want it just to make money. Yeah. So, which is, and, and that's, you know, that's how business works. That's the, you know, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. That's just, that's how all business works. You um, get to a size where money factors and, and runs everything at some point. We see it happen to game dev companies all the time where they start as passion projects and they end up as the thing that they used to bad mouth when they were a small team. Yeah. And <laughs> they end up as the thing they promised they'd never be as a small team pretty much. Um, but yeah, it's, it's definitely the kind of thing where, I agree with you. The the thing though is, and this is this is where the, it gets a little bit more gray. You you do have to wonder, like, at what point, what makes Twitch decide that like this person we want to give a really good offer to, and this person we don't, especially with all of the uh, the recent controversy over the last year of if you're big enough, we want you. It does, you're totally immune to everything if you're big enough. If you're bringing in viewers, that's all care. That's all Twitch cares about. We're starting to see from these deals that's not the case, which could mean that maybe there's like a new direction they're trying to go. Like maybe they're trying to become more attractive to different parties because they want to do different things with the platform. You know, it's it's definitely muddying the waters mm. in terms of the true objective and what they want to do with the platform in the future. You're saying what they being Twitch or they being YouTube? They being Twitch. Okay. Absolutely. Yes. Like what what they like, for instance, are they trying to do a more ad safe large approach? Uh, like for instance, there was there was uh, some commentary made where there's been this real big back and forth, uh, like in the LSF crowd, because people were like, you know, well, what would happen if XQ, XQC got an offer? And a lot of people are like, oh, well, of course, you know, he's like Twitch's biggest streamer. Twitch would do anything to keep him. And then other people are, are very much like, actually, if XQC left, like he's a huge brand risk. He's been banned a bunch of times. Like right. Twitch would want him to go. And, and it's those types of deals that really kind of give us some actual insight on what that board meeting is actually after. You know, the, the, the eight to nine top big wig board meetings and what they're deciding, like what they want from the platform. So, yeah, these types of deals, although they seem like one offs, like we're kind of seeing how Twitch is, is wanting to make things work in the future. Yep. And I think the other thing, too, which um, we, we might not ever see, but it comes down to what those contracts actually are. YouTube yeah. might be straight I mean, up most promising. Likely we'll never see them. Yeah. Like, <laughs> uh, uh, I have no basis for this information, but YouTube could be straight up promising a, you know, cash on signing situation, a signing bonus. And Twitch might be promising. Yeah. If you stay on the platform for X amount of time, you'll somehow, whether through whatever, increased sub rates, increased ad rates, increased ads, whatever, you'll accrue this amount of money over this amount of time. Um, and if I'm a creator and the money's high enough in the tens of millions, for a signing bonus, I don't know, that looks pretty good <laughs> in an industry where there's no, uh, there's no safety net. There's no knowing what's going to happen a year from now. Uh, signing some, some money that you don't, you could put away and live comfortably on if this whole thing just kind of dies. That's, uh, you know, that's enticing. And if Twitch doesn't offer that and they don't counter that, then yeah, uh, it's, it's up to the creator to make what choice they want to. Um, and you, You've touched on a really good point there where sometimes it's not about the money. Sometimes the like when when two parties are offering similar amounts of of huge more than we'd ever thought would ever happen 10 years ago amounts of money, at that point it really comes down to okay, well, you know, what's the safety like? You know, what are the requirements like? What do you what are the asks like? And all these other factors that may make it so people don't even take the, the best offer. Like, you know, maybe for, like for all we know Probably didn't happen again. Preface. Probably <laughs> we know to that Twitch maybe of offered this. more in some cases, yeah. but the offer, the 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 rest of the stuff was better in the other area. So you know, it it would be 
It'd make this discussion a lot more interesting if we had that information, but unfortunately, yeah, we probably never will. The other, the other side of that too, from YouTube's point of view, uh, they will never confirm this, but it is very interesting <laughs> to see Ludwig sign with YouTube and then pop up in the trending on two different aspects uh, of that algorithm of YouTube. And uh, another creator who is Twitch centric uh, suddenly drop off randomly from the algorithm just on any given we, day. We can month. talk about that. Just, I think some of it's it public. public. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it's also just, you know, it's very interesting how you, you get a brand new creator over there and you somehow pop into that algorithm a lot more than other creators on the platform. Uh, granted, that also might just be hype for the day, right? Maybe the algorithm's working as intended without them um, doing anything to it. But if you pay a bunch of money for a creator, you probably want them to be successful. Uh, Twitch has a front page. YouTube has the entirety of the internet in a lot of ways. Right? Also, funny enough, you're kind of describing the entire Facebook gaming platform. Right. Yeah. Like yeah. Facebook gaming basically decides how successful you are with how much your stream is embedded in timelines and such. So it, it's yeah. very much like just, a, you know, like the, the manipulate, it becomes... You know, there's not, there's never a situation, especially these days, with as big as the web is and as how many avenues there are. It's very rarely rare that there's a situation where there's one page that then delegates your success. You know, yeah. people come from all over the place. So when when your hands on a dial, basically saying like this is how much you're going to appear on people's timelines, suggestions, you know, that kind of stuff, um, you're basically just fabricating your own metrics at that point in a lot of ways. But I mean, for a lot of people, that's I mean, that's kind of the point. I mean, Twitch, you know, with with YouTube especially, like. You can't really fault them for wanting to put their best foot forward. I mean, they've never claimed to be the big arena of fairness, you know. So when they <laughs> sure. spend possibly eight to nine figures, God only knows, when they spend a huge amount of money on a creator, they want to maximize every penny. Because again, they're a business, you know. So so making making all those metrics run in their favor um, doesn't seem outside the realm of possibility at all. Yeah. I mean, Twitch does it with the front page and everything. Well, it, so, you know, it, like. It, it also brings up a very interesting point on, you know, when it comes to YouTube, uh, YouTube is compared to Twitch in terms of how much uh, like the SEO and the ads uh, platform uh, it is, it dwarfs Twitch in comparison in a lot of ways, in most ways. And so uh, as Twitch, you really only have kind of a front page. And a front page slot, a hero slot on front page, which is this first slot on front page. So if you go to twitch.tv, that's the stream that pop up that pops up. It doesn't do all that much for the creator. It's a flash in the pan type success. If you can create, you know, a one or two percent retention from that on the channel from a single stream, that's like a massive win. Um, whereas I think on YouTube, it generates a lot more when you get into this algorithm and you get to like the top trending and stuff in a lot of ways that can make or break a channel, uh, or, or really make a channel, I guess it can't break a channel. Um, and so it, you start to wonder like, besides like a front page, what are Twitch's tools of discovery that are anywhere close to what YouTube can do? Um, and if like Google starts to actually push that stuff, uh, to more than just like the top streams, uh, they could really do a lot. If they build that process out, it could really get crazy. All of a sudden, you go to Google.com and it automatically starts playing the embedded live stream of the day. Oh, cool. That guy yeah. has 7.5 million viewers. This looks fun. Oh, my <laughs> God. Um, yeah. I didn't even think <laughs> about the ramification of that. Holy shit. Yeah. You're not wrong, man. Oh, yeah, dude. By I, the way, well, I mean, uh, normally I, I would, never would never shout out a raid during the show. But a big thank you, friend of the show, Mike Shinoda. Oh, the raid. yeah. yeah. Thanks, Thank Mike. you very much. My, 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 no, my that's his famous Shinoda. song right there, My Shinoda. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for, for the Raiders, if you want to visit the other uh, the other show members, you can see the switch <laughs> right under there. We'd love to see you, too. So thank you, Mike. We appreciate it. Yeah. Hope you're doing all right, Mike. Uh, where uh, are we say well, I don't think they, well, I don't think they'll, they'll have that, uh, like, a, like, on their main Google, like, Google.com. But there are different, like, uh, Google homepages that people use. Well, and I think that it could be like you know, like the the Google homepage for like gamers or whatever. They already do it you though, know? and it, they already embed stuff. When you watch a video on YouTube and the video ends and you get related videos, 
Tim the Tap yeah. Man's stream, if he's live, pops up in those related videos, and it says he's live with thirty eight thousand viewers or whatever. I've seen that multiple wow, no times kidding. every single day. Really, and that is like no. that's already huge. That's already a massive amount of people. If you're in the gaming section of YouTube, the video ends and you see so and so streaming to X amount of viewers. That's much more enticing than like some dumb thumbnail gone like that. Right? You're gonna click right. on the live. Stream. No, I'm, I'm Your brain's moving to Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> literally google.com like yeah, you know how yeah, they have yeah. the google no, i know google. what you're saying yeah yeah, it, yeah that'd be massive yeah, yeah. it'd be massive like, underneath like where it says like da da feeling lucky and then it has like game stream of the day something like that like i could i could definitely see something like that happening for nope. sure yeah. and what's even more interesting is assume that something like that could very well be one of the uh the pieces of bait on a hook when they're signing these people Totally. Like imagine if they were like, yeah, so Ludwig, not only are we going to give you all this other stuff, but we're going to start making it so when people watch IRL material on YouTube, that you're immediately a suggested thing. Like, that's a huge deal, especially if you're already an established YouTube presence. Um, like, that's that's real nice. I mean, one of the biggest issues Twitch has had for a long time is discoverability. And even though, to their credit, Twitch has made huge strides in discoverability, like uh, from promoting smaller streamers to giving them more of a chance, the affiliate program. Like, back when we started, like, I think all three of us, eight plus years ago, like discoverability did not essentially exist. Uh, I mean, you had to have 350 active viewers <laughs> yeah, yeah. to get partnership. <laughs> like it was, it was like people these days, a lot of times will say like Twitch has no discoverability. It's like, man, <laughs> I was denied three times, you know, working my ass off. And, and a lot of people went through the same thing. Like they're just, it just wasn't there. Like it wasn't being built yet. So these days, don't get me wrong. It's not great. Everyone's discovered, but they certainly have made a lot of, of leeway. So it's, and, and with just like AP said, until YouTube can catch up with that, um, it's going to be, it's going to be more and more of an issue as we see moving forward. Because I think a lot of people want to be, I think Twitch and YouTube want to inspire people. They want to get them involved just as much as they want people coming to watch um, because they need the next in the Tapman. They need the next, you know, Dr. Lupo. So yeah, uh, I, I quiz on Twitter Claims that this is like their laser focus right now and that next year, like discoverability is one of their main things, which as always is still very much working on it, making it bigger too. So it would be nice to see that become a focus of major platforms for a while, I think. Yeah, sure. it's it's very interesting um, to take a look at like the conversation around each platform because I feel like on Twitch, it's kind of like putting out fires nonstop. Like that's the conversation around Twitch. We saw, we'll, we'll talk about some uh, uh, ban evasion tool that they just implemented this uh, this week um, or in the process of to kind of like put out these small little fires. Whereas YouTube, the conversation is like, please make a better platform so you can beat Twitch. <laughs> right? or, or at least be competitive. Be competitive. Like, yeah. 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 Uh, and so that that's an interesting thing to see uh, the community's uh, different thoughts on that type of stuff. Um and I don't know if that'll change, right? Like it, it, in a lot of ways, I think people treat YouTube as like this underdog when in every sense of the word, Twitch is the underdog. And this They're the currency. overdog. <laughs> <laughs> Twitch is the underdog in the situation uh, in terms of just like company to company. But yeah, I, we'll see. It's fascinating. Uh, Co, I think you, at the start of it, you said that, you know, even when we talked about Tim leaving uh, a while back, you said, you know, this is just one. If we start to see another, then it's more of a, a trend. Then it's a process. Then we start to see a lot more. And they've already said there's going to be a lot more. So we'll see what happens. Uh, we'll see who else uh, decides to leave. More and more contracts are running out. And I think we're starting yeah. to see that. And in a lot of cases, like like I was saying, it, it's going to be just as important to see who stays as who goes. Um, because that's Twitch very much being like, this is this is the image we want to be moving forward into the future. Like this is what we want. This is what we want people to think of when they think. Win. Yeah. So yeah. that's true. It's very true. Have we heard anything like because we we talked about it last uh, when this all like Tim and Dr. Lupo and stuff. Uh, Lyric made any like because he was at the same time, right? He was in that group. He was of, around like, that time. Yeah. Forever. He's still on the platform. I don't know if it's been like celebrated right, know, but... that he stayed okay. or if he's had like a announcement video of him staying lyrics, kind of the, okay. one of the odd ones when it comes to uh, like celebrating that type of stuff, 
Like he just sure. lyric just does what lyric does and kind of exists. So you're not going to see like a red door, purple door thing. No, he's not going to do one of these dumb <laughs> fucking videos. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. He, he he would probably make an announcement if whoever he signed with said you have to make an announcement. Right. Yeah. Um. You know, and also, but the the thing also with lyric is lyric is arguably outside of like XQC and maybe a handful of others, including also something we haven't talked about, including the international community. The yes. international community outside of Japan, because there are a lot of huge VTubers and VTube events on YouTube. Um, the overall international community seems very much fixated on Twitch, especially when you start talking about like European and things of that nature. Yeah. Um, but on that note, like with, with Lyric, you know, he has a gigantic, incredibly supportive community. He was one of the first big variety streamers on this platform. Like for him to move, they would have to give him incredible incentive because again, he does whatever he wants whenever he wants. You know, he was just tweeting about what, what was he just tweeting about buying the brand new Porsche electric car. Things are obviously going well. Oh, so it's kind of like yeah. it's like if things are going Did well, get a Taycan or a Taycan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, those things are those things are beautiful. Nice. Um, but it, it's really the kind of thing where it's it's kind of like at, at what point do you just have to go? You know, I'm totally content with this amount of success, and moving would be a risk to that. Like, yeah, I get I I get paid, but I enjoy doing what I'm doing, and it would be a risk to that system. Um, and also the community, you know, at that point when, when he has that much of a dedicated fan base. So yeah, I've, I've, I've been very paying very close attention to Lyric and I, anything, um, pertaining to any hint. Yeah. So he could have also just re-signed Twitch and not talked about it. I mean, people do that. That happens. It's <laughs> like, very true. Who knows? It's very true. Um, yeah, I think the people that you're going to see uh, that are more likely to leave are people that like Co said, uh, when it comes to Ludwig and especially Tim. Uh, people that already had that installed user base on YouTube. So it's less of a blow leaving behind, uh, as it says right there, 3.1 million followers on a platform uh, to just kind of, you know, not do anything with uh, for however long that contract is. Also important to, to point out that they so far have really, YouTube really so far has wooed people that have an established YouTube presence. Yes. Yeah. So they may not even be going after people that don't. Like that, that may be a big part of, of what they want is they want those with a, with a big solid foundation on YouTube to come and then boost that foundation into the live streaming com compartment of their website. Um, and then people that don't, you know, they just don't really care. They'd rather they just stay on Twitch because they're not going to bring their viewers anyway. You know, it, remember when we did a show where it was like the YouTubers are coming to Twitch. Now it's yeah. like the YouTubers are leaving Twitch. <laughs> They're going back to YouTube. <laughs> yeah. It's really interesting uh, to see well, how, it was how the tight video makers. Is. Yeah. The video makers wanted a, a live experience and I don't blame them for that, man. It's, it's, it's a different beast than making just videos and you can interact with your, uh, your audience and you know, you get a, it, it, they didn't have that. Now they have that. And uh, they also have you know more money than God. So, they do. Yeah. More yeah. power to them, dude. Uh, remind me, oh. uh, this is going to make me sound like an idiot, but uh, is Ludwig a like a, a certain game streamer or IRL? He's like an He's, IRL streamer. He, he not plays, only does IRL. Oh, really? Okay, okay. He does play games. He does, but, he does yeah. shows. So he, he not only does like standard IRL streaming, but he, he does like produce show types of things. Yeah. In fact, I think okay. they've already announced that his first stream on YouTube is going to be like a big produced show kind of thing. Like, what Wait. was his name? Uh, Sakuno. Sakuno, yeah. Sakuno. Uh, he like said that he's flying out to LA to be on their fir his first stream or something. So that I think that's probably yeah. why they got Ludwig is to do like the big, the big thing. So, and this actually speaks to my next point. Someone in my chat said, "Well, Co, isn't all your stuff on YouTube?" Yeah, all of I use YouTube like vods. This is why YouTube <laughs> would never be interested in me. It's because, see, what YouTube wants is they want small stuff that's super entertaining. That's the YouTube video. That's their future. That's the YouTube future. Little things, with popping thumbnails that are little bite size, you know, like Mr. Beast videos and stuff. You know, that's that's what they, they don't want long form. I'm like a lecture at YouTube. That's I'm like a school lecture. That's what I am. I'm a professor that no one wants to watch. Um, so yeah, you know, I have what 400 episodes of Pathfinder. They're all 30 minutes of no one wants to watch it. Um, it's basically a big like yeah. So yeah, don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> it's what I'm trying to say. Um, yeah, yeah they, that's what I use YouTube for as well, just to have a presence. That's what most streamers use it for. That. That's what most streamers yeah. use it for. Yeah, yeah. yeah. a lot. Of, well, uh, the reason, I, or not the reason, but 
people like Tim and people like uh, Ludwig, like Ludwig, I think for a long time actually did a YouTube video a day for like a year or maybe a little more than a year. Like he was very committed to the platform. Um, and that's, you know, streaming every single day is a different type of beast than doing a YouTube video every single day. Um, Tim also was very big or very committed on getting YouTube videos up, like Co said, where they're 10 minutes every single day. Uh, sometimes too. Reels. Yeah. And, and he was even so committed, like Tim, Tim was so, Tim was so aggressive about it that he would go live on Twitch. And if something happened on his stream, he would tell his editor while on air to make that YouTube video, it would get posted. Then he would go get his entire chat to go and upvote it or like it on YouTube. And it worked, right? Like that's, he built a giant fan base out of that on YouTube. Um, so you can be very aggressive about it and, and do that cross pollination with it um, to great success. Um, God, that hustle is, I mean, I it's have a different type I of hustle. I had it 10 years ago, man. I don't know. <laughs> I, say, I, 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 I have a modicum of hustle, but man, not, not even that much, dude. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm happy where I am because my work does not feel like work still. Like it, it's, it, I do have to like, uh, I get up, have a schedule, all that shit, but it's still like, once it starts feeling like a fucking slog, maybe it's time to, to hang it up or, <laughs> or like re examine what the fuck you're doing. Sure. Also, just to clear up some confusion, um, YouTuber, Twitch people cannot stream on YouTube that are under contract. Twitch yep. people can absolutely stream with other people on YouTube at the same time. But the thing in chat that was confusing people is Dr. Disrespect is banned on Twitch. Yes, and Twitch Twitch has actual things saying if someone is banned on Twitch, you cannot include them in your stream. So that's that's where the confusion is is there. If yeah. Doctor Disrespect was not banned and just decided to stay on YouTube, which he probably would at this point, um, then ap if his ban was lifted for some reason, then absolutely people could start streaming with him no problem. Yeah, yeah, but that's a different. Thing. You know, I've never uh, I've never had. I've never seen that question asked to Doc in a world where Doc didn't get banned by Twitch, because he would he would out of all the creators, he would be the one to kind of ask like, would you stay on YouTube because you didn't get a giant contract to go to YouTube? You just couldn't go to Twitch. You had to go to another streaming service. You didn't get paid to go to that streaming service. Would you stay? Uh, that would be an interesting conversation to or an interesting question to see him answer. Um, I don't know if we necessarily get the. I, I would actually want the response from Guy, not from Doctor Disrespect. Well, yeah, good point, good point. But also, just to be clear, we might get that one day because he is still adamant that that it was a false ban, and he also, I think, just a few months ago, mentioned that his lawyers are getting involved and he's convinced he to overturn yeah. it and all that stuff. So yeah, we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. Yep. So that's uh, that's one of the bigger stories of the week. We also had. Uh, I didn't. I saw the Twitter blurb on this. Uh, Co, you might be the best one to at least introduce this. Uh, Twitch put up a thing called Battling Ban Evasion with Machine Learning. Ah, yeah. Uh, can you talk about that a little bit? I'll pull up the article and we'll kind of skim through it. Uh, well, I did. I have not read the entire article. But the okay. only thing I can really say about it is, for anyone that may have not heard about it at all, is it's a step from Twitch to attempt to curtail chat in a way that is 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 a more positive direction. Twitch. Um, the, you know, under properly so, uh, became under a lot of fire in the last what half year ish, um, especially with the hate rating and everything, and a lot of stuff that was happening during major events and things of that nature. And at the time, people were screaming at the top of their lungs. Um, uh, there were petitions going around, all sorts of things saying Twitch do something, Twitch do something. This is some, this is Twitch doing something. This this is an attempt from them to try to make the experience better. Uh, it allows some some AI stuff to come in and flag things possibly before they become an issue. Um, it we're not sure if this is going to be the kind of thing where you know if a bot fires off in another channel, then it go you know with with hateful stuff that gets reported, then it gets on a list, and then and when that gets posted in your channel, you see it as a suspicious thing instead of a normal thing. Like I think in terms of of all the actual implementation, uh, we'll have to see kind of how it goes. But in that in that vein, it, it is a step in the direction to hopefully start alleviating alleviating some of that stuff. And yeah, let's let's go over it. And actually, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah. I saw uh, someone in chat already said it's potentially bad for VPN users. Which, yeah, just mm. skimming through what I've read, I guess it, it definitely could be. Um, so uh, I've kind of skimmed through it here. So it says for 
uh, people that are, there's different cases, essentially. Um, the suspicious user detection powered by machine learning is here to help you identify those users based on the number of account signals. By detecting and analyzing the signals, this tool will flag suspicious accounts as either likely or possible channel ban evaders. So you can take action as needed. Uh, here's what happens in each case. For likely ban evaders, messages won't be sent to chat at all. That said, they'll be vis visible to creators and mods so they can choose to leave the res uh, restriction as it is, monitor the user, or ban them from the channel. I think that's good. Uh, for possible ban evaders, messages will appear in chat normally, but the account will be flagged to the creator and uh, their mods so they can monitor the user to the creator and their mods. Oh, 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 sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I thought the creator of the account would be net <laughs> <laughs> You will be told if you are evading a man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so they can monitor the user and restrict them from chatting if needed. So, yeah, I, I think that seems fine. I think that's a good way to handle that. Unless it, unless there are too many false positives, that'll be the test. That's the big thing. It's it, this, this entire system is going to be based on like, how good is that? Is the system to flag that stuff? It, if it's the kind of thing where it's flagging, you know, 90% false positives, yeah. then it's the kind of thing where creators are just going to turn it off and then it's going to be useless. But if it's actually like working as they're hoping it's going to work, like that could be absolutely huge. I was, I was, I'm trying to, I'm doing the mental uh, gymnastics to think like, all right, if I go in Co's chat right now, he bans me and I make it a, a brand new account, not tell you the name, will it pick it up? I kind of want to test this on air, but the Twitch account process is a little bit. <laughs> I long. also, to be blunt, I don't have it. Can you put the on. link to that? In I the think chat? it's actually it's a. Uh, it says we're turning suspicious user detection on by default for all channels, so the streamers now? can focus more uh, on their content and their communities. Does it say when? Because I haven't seen any of that yet, but I do use FFZ, so maybe. Yeah, I don't know when it. Does it have a timeline? Zay says Grimms had to manually enable it. Barry really? says it's on for you, Co. Let me, let me take a look. On, Co. Let me take a look. What's up? Yeah, Barry said it's on. Barry said it's on, Co. It yeah. is on? <clears throat> I mean, I, mean I, I, I personally have not seen any any of it yet. Yeah. I think I I, to really yet. test it, it, it's pretty easy to see if an account has the same email attached to it. So that's probably one of the ways that the... AI learning can figure that out. So I think to like really test that, you would have to go to uh, an extent that someone uh, would really be able to test it. See, chat right now is saying how they're innocent and not suspect, but I mean, isn't that exactly yeah, what that's, somebody that's suspect would they're say? They're all suspect. Just ban them all. It's good I think. I think. Where are you finding this? We just need to get rid of all of them. I'll link it. Sorry. Okay. Uh, maybe I won't. Hold on. I was looking at the blog page and I can't find it. So. Yeah, I had to go to their Twitter account. I was looking on the blog page as well. I just put it in my oh, really? chat okay. if you want to spread that through all the, the chats. Okay. Yeah. Um, but there's... I, Thank I, you. I don't think oh, that there's a way... Oh, it's safety.twitch. Weird. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that there's wow. a way to actually uh, test this unless... Oh, there's different levels. We do it. Okay, so level... Detection setting level two, possible and likely evaders. Where are you seeing likely that? Likely evaders are... Oh, you can set them to monitor or restrict. Oh, this is in your dashboard? Yeah. Our system will identify potential ban evaders as either possible or likely. Our default recommendation applies to monitoring to messages that are possible and restrict from likely. Um, but yeah, I want to know, like, how does it... Do hmm. Yeah, we've got it on. I really like, I really, really like the idea of this system. And, and I guess the another big issue with this is they can't really be public about this system. Because the more, for every single word they utter in how they detect things, that's one word more that the people trying to get around it can use to get around it. Yeah. So they're in kind of a catch-22 here in a lot of ways, where it's like, we need it's, to know how it works to properly use it, but they also can't talk about how it works because then the people, the bad actors can get around it. You know? I mean, there's, there's probably some very simple stuff. Like one, if the account has the same email as the account that was just previously banned from the channel, that's probably a flag. Two, if an account was just made 10 seconds prior to joining that channel, that's probably a flag. Uh, if they, if the first channel they go to is your channel after just being banned, that's probably also a thing. See, that's where it gets interesting though, because like 
you have to think of all the cases where that wouldn't apply. Right. And, and the, and the last thing they probably want to do is have a bunch of false flags. Right. Like right. someone likes somebody has been hanging out in a Twitch channel and they really like it. They want to talk in chats. So they immediately make an account and then say something in chat. Would you want to flag that person? That's First true. Thing they ever say on Twitch. Yeah. That so is a use case like, that I didn't consider. I don't like it's, it, this gets into uh my p address family that's what i was about to ask if if it is like twitch has been very uh careful to never like ip ban people but they're 100 percent. they can see an ip of a user right like there's no way they that a user would be able to i mean there's a way that a user would be able to hide that there's no way that like twitch is not able to see that um and so they people just re they repeatedly coming back to the same option. Clearly, everyone just ban everyone. Clearly, I mean, there's no way around this. That's also just true. Use common sense and ban everyone. That's true. Nobody's innocent. Yeah, but it, I mean, it, probably at the most base level, it's just is the IP the same? Yeah. <laughs> right. Like yeah, I, again, again, that that's like that's so easy to get. I mean, if a public space is being used, if it's an internet cafe, if it's you know. Yeah. I think if somebody's been on Twitch for eight years and they go into an internet cafe where some dude five minutes before was acting the fool and they get perma banned, like it, then they stand up and say, "Who's talking shit in this <laughs> channel? <laughs> I will uh, fight I you. I'm a I tier three sub. God damn it!" <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't know if Twitch has access to MAC addresses. I that that would that's an interesting. I don't know if that's something it's true. That's, I don't know if it's tracked. I I really don't. And I don't think and Twitch then, would be public. What happens if you log in from different devices, like your phone and your brother, you know, like, it, oh, man. We'll see. I mean, yeah, it, you would think that it wouldn't work. It's turned on. So we'll see what happens if we get any, how many like false flags we get. All they need to do is anytime someone makes an account, just send them a little USB thumb scanner and yes. a little camera. And you, they just have to take a picture and scan your thumb. Take a COVID test as well. You said in chat. Yeah. Put, do, throw, throw some COVID test in there as well. Just, you know, absolutely. Be safe. Little a little USB needle just popping in your arm for blood testing. <laughs> it's accurate. Simple. It's accurate. A little cup for your pee. I'm not collecting that shit. Literally. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> uh, so yeah, fuck it. What? Are you Zeke asking? I'm, I'm looking for your, I'm your looking questions for it, are like, always valuable. The, Please ask. I'm I'm looking for the the thing to turn on that you guys are talking about in your uh, Oh, I never found it. Co was the one that found it. So oh, I don't... it's oh, under okay. it's under settings and then moderation, and it's the second section called suspicious users control. It may it may not be turned on for everyone. Like some, it wouldn't be the first time they've said this feature is on and it's not on everyone. Right? Yeah. I don't anyway, know. there it is. Okay. Oh, there there question okay. while he's looking. You, you, we all have follower emotes, right? Yep. Yep. Okay. You guys remember the ritual thing? I remember the name, but I don't remember what it actually was because there there was a chance. Are you talking 90 about that? I'm percent sure that I've been in channels where it's fired off, but what are, at the same time, like I haven't heard about it and have no ideas how to use it, and I don't. Barry says rituals still exist. What is a ritual? A ritual is when a moderator can can assign like a a, a a text line, and then that will pop up on everyone's screen, and they can hit a button and it posts it in chat. Oh, it's I thought that chant. was a chant. chant. Yeah. yeah, it's what I'm talking about. I'm sorry. They, yeah. Didn't they? Someone, I read somewhere. Ritual. I'm going to stop talking because this might have not been from a public source. Never mind. <laughs> 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 I think that was from uh, my account manager. So he probably don't want me to share that. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry about the oh. ritual confusion. I've still got the Satanist tag on my mind. So I'm a little, you know. Yes. Still, yes. Still a little muddy there. Yeah. 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 Oh, is there a Satanist tag now? Yeah. It was yeah. recognized by the, the U.S. government, so Twitch gave him a tag. Well, that was two years ago. They were a little a, bit late on that, but... Yeah, they get a bad rap. Yeah. <laughs> Ritual is a on-first visit to a channel. You have an option to click an emote, such as hi, and then it shows in chat to everyone that they are new and it's their first time. That's called a that's, ritual? That's a ritual? I, I thought think that was just a first-time message. They may have changed that to the new system where the first time somebody posts in chat, the the mods and the yeah. creator get a little message, which I love. I love that. I think that's I think it's, it's one of the best changes exactly. they've put on the platform in years. Yep. Fantastic. Just love it. The the it, it's incredible because the amount of people just from that that I've actually had come back to the channel is remarkable. 
right? Like the first time in a very long time that I've had new viewers come back and actually been able to see that they had come back and that they were a new viewer in the first place. I would like the option to make it so it's not first time only, it's period of time. I think yeah. that'd be really cool. So if somebody was like a part of the community and they leave for a few months and then come back, it's like, oh dude, like this, like it would say like this person hasn't talked for three months, welcome him back. You know, that yeah. kind of thing. That yeah. could be really fun. They, they could yeah. definitely uh, flesh that, that system out for sure. And it'd be really good. Zeke, I've had a lot of fun with that, that the, the, the first time chatter stuff, like, especially if they, if they talk shit, if that's the first time, like they chat something, it's like, you got big titties, fat boy. I'm like, that's your first thing you're going to say to me, dude? <laughs> like, yeah. Wow. It's a lot you fun, make an man. account just to call me fat, dude? Wow. All right. Well, some of the, uh, Welcome. you're in the, the right channel. Time, <laughs> some of the first time chatters, uh, during my little final fantasy run were, a little less than uh less than stellar <laughs> yeah yeah that's good we especially, we had especially when attempting to do raids for the first time. oh god we had a uh <laughs> what was it my mods and me were perplexed by this we had a i think it was like a 60 or 70 month sub who got a first time chatter award like notification in the chat and i like clicked to see what his actual chat history was they had never spoken in the chat and it wasn't just like a two-year thing they had literally never spoken in the chat and i was like you are the best viewer that i have ever had hands down you're the best number one it's, right now number one viewer it speaks to it speaks to jp's like kind of like it's like if i could just do this and everybody watch and not talk too much like well no 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 that's beautiful that's called a final fantasy stream seek that's uh <laughs> <laughs> right yeah. So yeah i was like i can make that happen <laughs> yeah. i just stream final fantasy and it's good you know? it's true it's true uh let's get into a little bit of gaming news there's really not that much as we're uh closing out the year here in q4 uh cd project red though <laughs> put out some news which is always fun uh this was for their investors not necessarily for their fans uh they put out a statement that said uh, that they quote believe cyberpunk will be considered a very good game in the long run. Uh, and went on to say it will sell for years, especially as hardware gets more powerful and we improve the game. Uh, they literally said this for investors, uh, because I think the following day there was a, uh, an earnings statement that was put out, um, saying that they, I think were down 30, there's something 30%. It was either up 30 or down 30, more likely down 30. But yeah, they kind of go on to say some other stuff. Um, he talks about the decision to, uh, this is the CEO who said this exactly. I think it was the CEO. He says uh, it's Kaczynski. Co, is that the CEO? Do you know off the top of your head? Sure. Okay, let's go with it. Uh, the decision to postpone the next-gen version of Cyberpunk was a difficult one, but we are confident that it was the right one, especially since... It was clearly recommended by our development team. That statement alone is hilarious to me because like the entirety of cyberpunk and the situation that they found themselves in was because they didn't listen to their development team and they shoved that game out in its state. And now they're saying we are confident that it was the right one, especially since it was clearly recommended by our development team. So I guess they learned uh, that, that you probably should listen to the people that are making it. Um, <clears throat> he goes on to say, we need the extra time to fine tune the visuals and performance of the game to be as high quality as possible throughout the game. Uh, they updated the Roma app in late October to show that the launch of new Cyberpunk 2077 updates and free DLC had been delayed from later this year, uh, 2021 to 2022. So, Yeah. Kind of the same old, same old there. It was an investor statement so that their investors didn't freak out. And uh, we'll see what happens. <sighs> That's cyberpunk. I do fully believe, though, that eventually they will get that game in running in working order. And it will come out. Absolutely. Uh, and fact, be, be the game that it, it should have been at launch. And it's close in, in a lot of ways. last month, the game has been flooded with positive reviews on Steam. Really? Absolutely. In fact, I think it's now mostly positive. Let's I'm not see. Mistaken. I'll pull it up. It's currently on sale, fifty percent off. I guess because the Steam sale. It is. 
All reviews, mostly positive. Recent reviews, very positive. Yep, yep. God, I'm... The thing is, is... That's crazy. The the problem... Here's here's where it sucks. The dude is absolutely right when he says that over time, cyberpunk will be seen as a success. He's absolutely right. It's going to be like No Man's Sky. I mean, Mm. like, it's, it's the situation where the game eventually will get DLCs that add full new functionality. Hopefully it will eventually get... You know, it's already gotten a bunch of bug fixes. Like, eventually the game will be good. And I hate to say it, but a lot of people are going to somewhat forget about the the rough release. I say he's mostly right because the part that sucks is that it required them going through... And it required them going through what they're going now to get there. Which is like, it's it's gonna split the community between the people that are like, cool, the game is great now, this is awesome. For the other half of the community, which is like, yeah, but they totally betrayed us. Like they they betrayed and our trust and lied to us. And they use scummy tactics to take our money. Like like it, and and the problem is both sides are going to be right. So they could have continued being a poster child of development and lost money and not released Cyberpunk, cut its support for previous gen systems and release something amazing like a mid to late next year. But instead, they decided to go the less pleased investors route, and they've essentially ruined the reputation for a large percentage of their their company, of their player base. So it sucks. They're right. They're absolutely right, but they're right for all the wrong reasons. Right. Yeah. See? <laughs> just getting, oh, just getting a little chilly. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm just turning turn off the air. Gotcha. I thought I thought we were getting a goof. I thought there was cyberpunk. I thought you were about to pull Keanu Reeves out from behind the green screen or some shit. <laughs> Oh, that would have been awesome. That would have been great. Now I feel bad that I didn't. Yeah, we should. Uh, if we ever have yeah. an IRL interview with Keanu Reeves, we'll ship him up to Colorado, put him behind your green screen, and that's how we'll reveal it. That would be breathtaking. It would be. It would be. It would be. Yeah. Uh, the other thing, man, uh, Battlefield and Halo, and they're they're all just getting slammed. Different reasons, though. Yeah, for completely different reasons. You are correct. Yeah. You are correct. Uh, I mean, I'm almost getting like, slammed at, as in like noise. bad shit said about them. Yes. Oh, okay. it's one of those things where it, it face not a. I read it and I'm like, man, the internet's just mad. But there also is some like actual criticism <laughs> to to factor into that. The Halo stuff, they're mad about how the um, the battle pass rewards are too hard or not too hard, but they're a pain in the ass to get. And they're definitely the way that they are structured is to spend money. I think is ultimately why people are upset. And the most recent in-game event that they did, uh, that launched last week, I want to say, uh, was for some new armor and it just sucked. Like the, the process of doing it and the ways that you unlock all of the different like samurai halo armor, uh, was just fucking bad. Uh, it was poorly implemented. It takes way too much time. It was piecemeal. So you would have like a shoulder and your other shoulder would just uh, be the like normal shoulder. Are What's we up? effing? We good? Yeah, we're good. Unless we're effing on your I'm channel. We're, I, have all, I have all three chats up and I'm just seeing it on yours, Co. Oh, huh? weird. That's really I, weird. It's all going from JP's. Why does that make any yeah, sense? Yeah, that doesn't make any sense to me. Okay. We did. No, we didn't really talk too much shit about Co. Or I mean about Twitch. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know why they would do that. Is it still effing? Good now. It's it. We're okay. We're good. Anyway, okay. Let's anyway. keep going. Sorry, yeah, yeah. I didn't mean to cut you off there. No, no, no. Uh, yes. Ultimately, the battle pass is just poorly structured, and the ways to get all of the rewards, Zeke, are, are an absolute pain in the ass. And so people are pretty upset about that. Especially like, people that want to. Like, like time consuming grind? Like, yes. Yes. The, yes. the problem is they they at first it didn't matter how you played it was slow as balls it was incredibly slow at first then they made a a fix and the fix is incredibly weighted to casual players where you get like three times the experience for the first game of the day and then it goes down as you play the games which is good it's a step in the right direction but there's a lot of people that are now being extremely vocal saying like why are we taking small steps like this needs to be fi- like like you guys are a major company with a major IP like this needs to be better. You need to think this through quicker. And then that's, of course, schisming the community to let's give them credit where it's due to this is a huge IP that needs to do much better, much faster. And they're yelling at each other. 
Yeah. So yeah. it's become a thing. They did introduce some uh, changes, I think, yesterday, or the discussion uh, of the changes. I don't know if they're fully implemented in the game yet. Um, and I think people were, like, happier about that type of stuff. Yeah, uh, someone in chat says it's 200 XP per match now as of yesterday. Um, so it seems like they're they're listening to community feedback and, and making that stuff um, better. I think, obviously, the, the response to that uh, from the Internet is, like, the QA told you this was bad. You still shipped it anyway. So uh, <laughs> it's, I guess if you have enough outrage, shit gets changed uh, is, is the lesson to learn uh, for gamers there. Um, it should have definitely so, been left um, over the first way. I channel just air 3000 for a bunch of people. And Zeke was there saying, it's not going bad on my channel, y'all. <laughs> uh, thank you. That's really thank weird. Thank you so much for that. Uh, apparently, yeah, apparently it's, all over the place on my channel guys so try, try one of the other guys you you may how does that even make sense life. though because it's it is literally the exact signal sending to one spot this is this is twitch showing me they're not happy with my commentary yeah like twitch, <laughs> twitch is like these motherfuckers we're gonna take them out one by one they were talking shit they were talking shit uh it's like the mob boss it's like say again that i don't love you see what happens yeah Barry, what? Barry, why is that happening? Why is it on one channel and not on all of the channels? Barry, Barry doesn't run the uh, the the restreamer. That's Jack. So I'll I'll, I'll ping Jack and Jack! see what we can figure out. It really doesn't make oh, sense to me. Really, a suspicious user. I am. I'm pretty sure I just got flagged for suspicious use. And yeah, I were to say yeah, I can't. I would just happen. Yeah. Barry's comment in reply. Fuck. Oh, <laughs> what, Barry? Wow, well, Barry. there goes his Christmas bonus. Yeah, he's not. No shit. Well, to be honest, Cody was never going to get one because he doesn't invoice, you know? So <laughs> it's, it's up to him. Uh, and then the Battlefield folk are just mad because that game just has a fucking ton of issues. Uh, that man, wow. Just a billion issues. Look, I, oh, I, will, I, I will continue to say this. I have fun when I play Battlefield, but man, there are so many issues in that game. Um, they put out a patch uh, adjusting some like gameplay stuff. One of the guns was uh, much stronger than the others. They adjusted some ARs or something like that. Um, the last patch definitely helped a lot. But now I, I saw a, uh, a Jack Frags uh, YouTube video who's like a big creator in that, uh, that community. And he was sitting on top of a building and basically in a bot match, uh, kind of attracted all the bots to a small area and the more people and more shit that happened in that small area the hit registration started to go away so he would just be shooting enemies and none of the shots would connect at all the more people that got involved uh and so like seeing that video it makes me think that there's just massive amounts of issues uh in that game that we don't even know about yet um People are still playing it, but they're not happy. Hey, <laughs> more power to Sacral, man. Yes. He's just been like screaming through all this stuff. He's like max level. Like, oh man, it's, it just, yeah. It's so unfortunate too, because I think I speak for a lot of people when I said we were really hoping that 2042 would be good, you know, and then they cut out like so many weapons, like so many, there, there's so few weapons, so few game modes, not, not a huge amount of maps, like, it's it's just it's it's such a step backward in so many ways. It's really really unfortunate. Yeah. Um. And and they, they call the scoreboard a legacy feature. I saw like, that. Yeah, that's kind of a weird one. Really, really. Like, no, you just didn't put what it in. What does that mean? It means that it was. Uh, they 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 qualified some things as legacy features because they didn't put them in the new one, and they and they're trying to say like it's a thing of the past, and it's just like that's so clearly not the case the scoreboard like zeke that, being the thing that shows your kills deaths assist like you can't actively right, pull that press, up you press tab there's no tab. Like you hold tab to look at it there's no tab you can't look at you can't look at how you're doing not globally not globally uh, not compared to other people you can do it in your squad other people are doing yeah, yeah. Oh, okay yeah. okay but you there's well, right. there's not like a global and then, and then they made this do they not know change? their fucking audience dude like well and that's how, even that's how like cod cod kids measure peen like, <laughs> exactly. You're saying you're saying right. Here's what's even weirder. They made it so like no longer are you a battlefield soldier. Now you are a person with a name. 
which is already like not great because then you're just running around like with clones of everybody. And then yeah. on top of that, they make it so at the end of every round, it puts everyone in a line that did the best. And it's like, you see the exact same people like with saying, to, it's just so awkward and weird and not well thought out. It's just, it's so strange. Yeah. Um, and just, it just doesn't seem like, it seemed like some big wigs wanted some things to happen and then they just kind of did it without really thinking about it. And it's just so awkward. It's so awkward. Yeah. And it's not, I mean, I, I still stand by the idea that like, as long as there's no issues happening in the moment, I have fun with it's Battlefield. Fun. Yeah. Dude, like I, I had I a great a time playing with you. Blast. And when we were just doing it, oh, yeah. Like, it's, the game, it's still Battlefield. It's still a modern-day current Battlefield. It's still fun. It's still a fun Battlefield. It's just, like, there's just so many parts of it. that it's and You know, in some ways, it reminds me of Cyberpunk, where it's, like, there's some good stuff in it. Like, there's absolutely some good stuff in it, and it's it's enjoyable to spend time in if if it's not screwing up, <laughs> and, you know? But, but it's mired with issues and problems and design decisions that just aren't great. Yep. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's rough. Um, all right. Well, let's, uh, I'm going to restart, uh, the, the connection for Co's stream, which again, this doesn't make sense on a technical level because it's all the same. Uh, if it's affecting yeah. Co's stream, then it's, it's his, it's, it's something to do with his page in particular, I guess. I don't know. It's really strange. Uh, we're going to, we're going to take a break though. We'll toggle it. Uh, so we'll go offline real quick and then we'll be right back. So don't, you don't have to leave the channel or anything. It should just restart and hopefully cool. whatever connection is frayed, uh, it, it starts to, uh, to get a little bit better. Then when we come back, uh, we do have uh, a Starfield trailer that we could watch. It's seven minutes. Yay! I haven't checked that out yet. Uh, do it. there's also a Halo Infinite campaign launch channel or com campaign launch trailer that we can check out as well as a Warframe cinematic for the new war, which I haven't seen yet. Have you seen that? Is it good? Okay. I haven't checked that out yet, so we can we can watch all three of those, and then also uh, cool. talk about whatever games we've been playing. So, which is really, I think, like maybe four games amongst. Uh, <laughs> three of, uh, I could talk for the rest of the show about the game I, I had been playing, stream. so we're good. Yeah, oh, you did have you did have a stream. Okay, good. good. I had the uh, I streamed Lost Judgment, but I've been playing one game, and one game only. Oh, I'm curious to I'm curious to see what that is. See it. Uh, we come back from break. Yeah, yeah, I'll, this I'll is tell the you teaser. all about it. This is the teaser. This is the teaser. I'm glad. Oh, I'm I know. Glad. I'll tell you all about oh, it. Oh, my. Okay. I know what that is because the last time we had a show, I messaged you in uh, Discord or in Slack. And you're like, hey, how do we get this? Yep. And there we go. You've been playing it nonstop for two weeks. Um, also, I played Resident <laughs> Evil 7 in VR some more. And uh, I'll talk about <gasps> my experiences because uh, I'm still. I slept with the light on last night. Be right back. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have more drop frames. 